Good morning, Nam Show, and welcome to our second session about personal mixing with the Klang product family. You might have joined our session on Tuesday already, where we introduced our tag type personal monitoring system, Klang Controller. By the way, same as on Tuesday, we will have time for your questions at the end of this session. Uh, so please type them into the chat section and we will get back to that. Today, we will dive much deeper into the functionalities and workflows of working with this exciting device. While it is intuitive and, in, and easy to operate for musicians, I want to show you some possibilities which give uh, integrators and production managers an absolutely unrivaled flexibility and ease of use. But first, let's start with a quick recap of what Clunk Controller actually is. Um, just to remind you, Clang Controller is a controller for all Clang processors. So it works with Clang Fabrik, Clang 4, DMI Clang, and whatever might follow in the future. Okay. Um, but there are quite a few um, possibilities, elements, and features that lift it far above a simple controller functionality. We'll take a look at all of them today. The device can be used as a tabletop device or it can be mounted on a microphone stand, ideally uh, by using the K&M uh, mic stand clamp. We introduced the True Ambience microphones, um, which is a set of fully digital binaural ambience microphones that can handle up to 130 decibels. That's quite significant. Looking at the top side again, um, one of the most um, uh, eye-catching features would be the color displays. Those displays show me everything that I need to know, the name, the metering, the level, mute and solo and so on. And of course we can use the same color coding that we are using in Klang App already. So each channel can have a different color which is great for overview. Beneath those there are eight um, uh, rotary encoders with a push and turn function. Um, and the push function can be selected by those two buttons, um, by selecting mute and solo functionality. I will show you that in more detail a little bit later in this presentation. Um, also, we can use the config button to open the whole channel menu for one channel, where we have the possibility to not only do level mute and solo, but we can select the pan mode, we can pan the signals horizontally, we can pan the signals vertically, we can decide the stereo width of a stereo channel, reassign to a different DCA group, and of course change the colors. So all that is locally possible and uh, super easy to reach. On the left hand side we can see those five bank selector keys, um, starting with the groups bank, which gives us access to eight DCA groups on our Klang processor. The channel banks give us access to 24 mono or stereo channels from the pool of channels that our uh, Clang processor allows. So for example, if we are using a DMI Clang with 64 inputs, each musician can just choose their most important or their favorite 24 mono or stereo channels to directly mix on the, on the surface of controller. And uh, finally, we have the ambience and aux bank, which you could see as a kind of last step before uh, the signals are going to the headphone amp, because this is where we combine the local ambience, the true ambience, the local aux in, as well as the actual mix that is coming from our Clang processor. And those combined are then going to the headphone amp. And the volume for that is simply controlled by this uh, big and easily to reach uh, main volume button. Let's take a look at how we actually operate Clang Controller as musicians on stage. Spoiler alert, this section is not going to take very long because it's actually super easy. Um, I'm using a software emulation so I can screen share this with you. Uh, we just talked about the ambience and aux channels, so let's just move back to the groups. Um, as mentioned before, they work exactly in the same way as you know them from Clang App already, including the relative mixing function, which means if I increase the level of my drum group, you can see that the other groups are going down in level and vice versa. So um, this relative mixing function is a fantastic way to protect the musician's hearing. Why? Because 
usually musicians would um, turn up this signal, then that, then this up, then this up, and then this up, and they would repeat that until the ears are bleeding, right? If, however, we have the relative mixing function, we just work in balances between those groups. That means the overall level stays in check. And again, that protects the hearing of the musicians. We do have the choice, though, to deactivate this function. So we have the choice between um, clang style relative mixing or classic DCA operation. Let's move on to the uh, channel banks. So if I take a look here, I can see the 24 mono and stereo channels that I chose for my mix. Um, I can change the level with my uh, rotaries, of course. And if I select the mute key, I can activate the mute for each channel um, that I push down on the encoder. Okay. Same thing goes for solo. So if I select solo and I want to solo my acoustic guitar, I can do that. Or all of my guitars. Right? And you can see that the solo light is now blinking. So this is a great indicator in case I did that by accident or I forgot that I soloed something. So even if I'm in a completely different bank, I will always see that something is soloed. And I don't have to search for those channels. Um, I just press and hold the solo key for a couple of seconds and that will act as a solo clear function and I can immediately hear everything again. Right? If I press down on the config button, I can go to the um, channel edit menu, which shows me the name, the level, I can solo and mute directly from here. I can choose the panning mode between stereo and 3D. I have the azimuth, which is the horizontal panning of a signal around my head, as well as the elevation, which moves the signal virtually above my head or below my head. So with those two uh, rotaries, I can access any angle around the head super easily and super fast. Um, if I'm using a stereo channel, I can decide how far apart left and right channel are within my um, immersive soundscape. I can reassign uh, um, my channel to a different DCA group. And of course, I can change the color to whatever I want. And that is actually everything you need to know to operate Clang Controller. So it is that easy. It is super intuitive uh, for the musicians. Um, the only thing I didn't show you yet is um, the uh, system settings section. We can access that by pressing and holding the config button. We first have um, the possibility to choose any mix um, in our system. I will show you that in, 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 uh, in a couple of minutes. We have uh, network settings, so we can choose between DHCP and a fixed IP. If we want to operate with a fixed IP, I can just go here and with my rotaries assign the IP address quickly to whatever I need to uh, work with. And then we have the audio settings. Um, on the left hand side here, we, oops, over there, um, we have a gain pre-selector for the headphone amp on board. So if we're using IEMs, we don't need that much juice out of the headphone amp. So we can use the minus 12 dB setting, which is a great way to actually be able to use the whole uh, main volume button um, and have a much finer control of my, our main volume. Um, with the regular setting, it will be just without any gain change of the headphone amp. And if we need a little bit more juice, for example, for studio headphones, we can use the loud setting that boosts the headphone amp by 12 dB. Above me, you can see the Dante follow function. I will show you that in more detail in a couple of minutes. That's a super exciting and super interesting function. Um, and then we have um, a section where we can um, save and load, uh, export and import eight local preset banks. Okay, so if I like what I did, I can simply store and recall it. Back to the physical side of Clank Controller. So um, I want to give you a couple of examples of how we can use the ins and outs and which um, extra possibilities we have that might not be obvious at first glance. So we have this network port, um, which has uh, three functions. It powers the unit through PoE if we're using a PoE switch. If we don't use a PoE switch, we can still use the, um, uh, the, the DC power supply. 
We take care of control through that network port, as well as Dante two-channel in, two-channel out. The two-channel in on Dante is quite obviously the way that we're getting the mixes in from our Clunk processor into our Clunk controller. In the same way, we are establishing a communication between Clunk controller and Clunk processor. And this is how we actually operate our mixes. Then we have um, a stereo analog input in form of a local mini jack aux in on board of controller. We can use that to connect a, a click for the drummer, a playback or maybe a rehearsal track and just add that to our mix that is going to our ears. But not only that, we can also choose to send out the local aux via Dante back into the main system. For example, to share it from there with the rest of the musicians. The same thing, by the way, is possible for the true ambience. We can also choose to send that out via Dante and share it with the rest of the system or use it for whatever creative purposes uh, we want to use it for. Um, on top of being able to use the headphone amp directly on board, um, something that will make the drummers really, really happy is that you can use the line outs at the same time, for example, for a subwoofer or maybe a, a butt kicker um, or a, however you want to call them. Um, so tons of possibilities with that. If we need to be wireless, we can connect an RF transmitter directly on the local analog outputs. However, if we want to keep it tidy and we don't want to have the RF transmitters directly with the musicians on stage, we can send the whole mix um, out via Dante, for example, to Dante-compatible RF transmitters. Or if our transmitters are not Dante-compatible, uh, we can simply th send the mix out to a Dante-compatible stage box and from there with an analog uh, cable to our RF transmitters. Or we simply send the mixes back into the main system, into the mixing board and use the, the local outputs or whichever um, output functionalities we have. Speaking of consoles, um, as you might know, um, we have the possibility to control um, our Clunk processors directly from the surface of every SD and Quantum Range console. If uh, you want to learn more about that functionality, please feel free to uh, scan the QR code here, which will lead you directly to a webinar on that topic where you can learn everything about the functionality um, as well as how to set it up and what you need for that. Okay, So it's a great way for monitor engineers um, to stay within their used workflow on their console surface, but have access to the wonderful world of uh, immersive in your monitoring. So why am I telling you that? Um, because of course you can use the the console integration at the same time as deploying clan controllers to the musicians. And that opens up the door for a lot of very, very cool um, uh, applications. First, it makes the setup much easier because you can just name the channels directly on your console and that name will magically appear on your controllers. That's already pretty cool. But also, for example, if a musician changes a level or a position of a signal, that will reflect in the auxes on your console. You can see what they're doing. And if you think it's a bad idea or they need help, you can do that directly from the surface of the console. You don't have to run over across the stage to their personal station to, to help them with it. So um, that is already pretty cool. And then of course you can store and recall everything that the musicians are doing within the uh, snapshot functionality of your console. If you're using the latest Digico software, you can even um, apply recall saves completely separately for each channel and every aux. So even if you have super complex uh, snapshot settings um, where you sometimes need to store settings for the musicians and sometimes you need to give them their independence, you can just do all of that and program that super easily in one central position, which would be your console. I promise to talk a little bit about the Dante follow function. So let's say I have a changeover and I need to uh, use one controller for a different musician. So I need to change it to a different mix. Simply going into a different mix is super easy. You saw that. Um, however, what about the audio? Do I really need to take out Dante controller and manually repatch it? 
No, because um, I can activate the done to follow function and that means that the audio will repatch itself automatically. So I open Dante controller here so you can see um, what is happening. If I change to a different mix, the patching follows automatically. Keep in mind, you don't have to keep Dante controller open um, for that functionality. So that makes switching to a different mix very, very fast and, and, and effortless. And it opens up a couple of more possibilities, not just speeding up our changeovers. I can also, um, for example, in a situation where there's only a front of house console and there's no monitor console, um, I can just put a clan controller beside me at front of house so I can just, um, you know, listen into the musician's mixes through the same headphone amp. So if I need to help the guitarist, I just select that mix, audio patching is happening automatically and I'm hearing the mix of the, the guitarist through the same headphone amp. Same for the drummer, the keyboard player, the bassist, whoever I need to help, right? Even, um, you can even use Clan Controller like a mini monitor console. Let's say there you have a, um, a theater production or you have new musicians in and a tech wants to help them a little bit with their mixes while they need to focus on, you know, hitting one, two, three, and four. Um, you can just put it on the side of the stage and just simply log into whichever mix the tech wants to help with. And on top of that, some of you might know the musician queue function um, in Klang app. A similar thing we can use with Clang Controller. So if the drummer wants to help the guitarist with uh, his or her mix, they can just simply log into that, hear their mix and help them adjusting the mix without even having to leave the drum chair or without having to leave their personal Clang Controller. And once the problems are settled, they just can go back to, to their own mix and uh, keep playing drums. We have talked about um, making it easy for the musicians with workflows and the right tools like Clang Controller. We have talked about protecting the hearing of the musicians with features like the relative mixing functionality. We have talked about the workflows that make it easy for musicians to focus on you know, their art instead of their monitor mix. But we have not talked yet about the, the, the most basic feature for that that we have in the Klang, um, in the Klang ecosystem which is the actual immersive in your monitoring mix. What is binaural audio? You probably heard about it uh, with the famous cocktail party effect. So let's say you and a friend are at a cocktail party and you're trying to have a conversation. There are tons of people around you. Everyone is loud, talking, laughing. There might be uh, a DJ. So the noise around you and your conversation partner might be louder or at least as loud as the voices. So Theoretically, it should be super hard for you to understand each other. But from personal experience, we know that it works. And the reason for that is simply that our brain is able to focus on whichever area around our head is interesting at a certain point in time and ignore or at least tone down all the other signals. And that is very, very powerful actually, because it kind of mixes the audio that is coming to our ears and makes it easier for the brain to work with it. It also allows us to listen at lower levels in our mixes, which again protects our hearing. So how is that even possible? Without going into all the scientific details, um, it has to do with three factors that our brain constantly analyzes in the audio that is coming in, which is level, time and coloration. Level just says that if a signal is coming from there, it's louder on this ear than on this ear. So far, so clear. But due to speed of sound, it also arrives earlier on this side than on this side. It's a very, very tiny difference, but our brain is quick enough to pick up on that. And finally, um, a coloration, which comes through the, um, the unique shape of our earlobes and the sound being reflected by different points of our earlobe into our ear canal. And each uh, point of our earlobe for each angle that is, that is coming at our ear, has a very specific frequency signature. Um, so every angle of sound sounds a little bit different. And our brain uses that together with the two other factors to constantly calculate an angle uh, of sound. And we are essentially emulating those three factors plus some secret German 
Mojo source, um, to being able to place any signal that we're sending into the Klang processors virtually on any point around your head, above and below. And due to that, we can use all the advantages that we know from real life, from an acoustic situation. So, lower level, uh, less hearing fatigue, um, more stable mixes. We don't have to change so many things in the mixes all the time because our brain is able to focus automatically on certain areas around our head. And on top of that, there are some psychological factors that are quite fascinating. Um, for example, there is an area which is directly in front of us and slightly higher. So roughly this area for me here, um, where my brain will always put a focus on. It will always focus on signals coming from that area. And that has to do with how we grew up as kids. Our parents were talking to us from that angle. So some of the very first um, crucial signals that we received as young human beings were coming from that area. But also on an instinct level, something big and dangerous would approach us from there. So our brain is conditioned to always pay attention to what is coming from there. And in mixes, um, it makes total sense to just place um, like the really crucial signals. For example, for a singer, the voice and maybe the piano as a harmonic context into this focus area in the front. And as a result, we don't have to turn that up so loud in the mix because the priority is given by the position and by the psychology and not by level. And that alone makes a huge difference in in mixes. There's another focus area which is um, behind us and a little bit lower. Signals that are coming from that area are perceived by our brain uh, as not, um, not important but also not dangerous. So um, we can place all the other signals that we want in the mix and that fill up our mix and that give us energy in the mix and context um, in that area. And even if we turn them relatively loud in the mix and we have a really fat and rich sounding mix, those signals over there are never in the way of my literal center of attention. So that much uh, for, for now as a quick recap and a quick <laughs> few minutes explanation of what binaural audio is. Um, if you want to learn more about that, um, please follow the QR code over there which will lead you directly to a full webinar on the binaural basics, on the science behind Klang and uh, how you can get the maximum out of the tools that we offer for you. Okay, and now I think it is time for uh, questions, if there should be any. Um, so today we were talking about um, um, all the things that we didn't have the time to mention uh, on, on Tuesday's presentation about Klang controller. Um, and uh, yeah, of course, we also did that uh, little five minute science um, nerd compression. Um, so um, that uh, should give you a little bit of an overview. <clears throat> Please feel free to um, uh, follow our social media, of course. Um, if there are any new webinars or uh, online courses or tutorials, we will, of course, post it there. Um, also on our website, there's a section where you can just take a look at um, all the technical webinars that we did for sound engineers, but also for musicians. Um, but also there are some uh, some interviews that we that we took with uh, musicians and sound engineers um, who are working with our systems, um, where they just talk a little bit about their experiences and how they are using the systems and how they get the maximum out of uh, the tools. All right, so um, I saw a couple of comments here in the, in the, um, in the live discussion um, about <clears throat> uh, Dante being the future. I would, um, I would definitely agree with that. Dante is a super powerful um, audio um, um, platform or, or transmission system. Um, it is very, very flexible. It makes it super easy. And especially if you combine that with our done to follow function, um, it makes it absolutely effortless um, because you just set it on once and then all the changes that you do are more or less happening automatically. Um, um, a little um, uh, uh, additional PSA. Um, Please uh, take a look at um, our uh, colleagues at, at Digico. Um, 
because not only are there uh, several further uh, webinars and sessions um, now during online NAM, but also on Facebook and YouTube, of course. Um, but also there's there's a very interesting um, uh, new one-on-one um, -on -one course that Digico is offering, where you can just book a 45-minute slot from anywhere in the world uh, through Zoom with professionals from Digico, from Clang, um, and so on, where you can ask all the questions that you could never ask before. Um, so yeah, we are we are all ready and and looking forward for all the questions that might come in. So it seems um, that there are not uh, too many uh, other questions, unless I'm missing something. So I guess um, I was talking enough already. <laughs> um, okay, so in case you should remember any questions later, um, please get in touch with us either through our social media, um, through the, this NAM platform. Um, I will also um, uh, put an email address into the screen um, in a minute. Um, so just write that down, get in touch with us if you have any questions. Um, we are super happy to see how you are going to implement Clang Controller and the whole Clang ecosystem uh, into your production, into your house of worship, into your theater. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're very happy and, and excited to go that path with you and uh, support you with every step of the way. So. Uh, it's late in Germany, it's nearly my bedtime, so I guess I have to um, pack up over here and, and get going. So um, please enjoy the rest of NAM show and I hope to see all of you in person next year in Anaheim again. Thank you very much and stay safe and stay healthy. Bye bye. <laughs>